Hey guys, I'm so excited. I couldn't wait to make this video and share the news. In fact, uh, I've been waiting a couple hours, but I couldn't wait anymore. And it's literally about five o'clock in the morning here in Florida. And I'm literally in my boxers. <laughs> I just, I just grabbed the, uh, I, I just grabbed the shirt, threw it over my t-shirt and threw on my hat. So I looked a little respectable in the video, but I'm really excited. Uh, a presidential candidate agreed to uh, come on blue collar and uh, be interviewed by me via Zoom like we do. And uh, I'm going to give you the details in a minute. But first, I want to I know no one likes a bragger, uh, but I need to boast. But I'm going to boast in Christ because he's the only one that deserves to be boasted about. If you know me, you know why I'm excited, you know. Um, if you don't know me, you'll know in a minute why I'm so excited. You see, I'm just a blue-collar guy, just a blue-collar Catholic, who actually lost his job last week. So I'm an unemployed blue-collar guy who just felt led to take my phone one day and start talking about the Lord and the church that God uh, gave us. But, um, but you know, I have other, like, like all of us, we all have different interests. Some guys it's football, some guys it's baseball. You know, my thing I'm, I'm ex the most I'm excited about is God and the church he's given me. And I was blown away by God's grace when he allowed me to interview uh, like my hero of the faith, Dr. Scott Hahn, <laughs> and I got to meet him. And uh, and then I'm also a big fight fan. My whole life I've been a big fight fan. And I was allowed to go into the home of a former heavyweight boxing champ, Pinklin Thomas, and interview him for like an hour. And we became friends. You know, he even offered me training lessons, you know. But one of my biggest passions since I've been a teenager is politics. You know, I love talking politics and debating politics. And uh, so this is amazing that a presidential candidate, you know, they all talk about being for the working guy. But this guy's actually coming on a working guy's uh, show. So I'm very grateful for this man who's coming on. And you know me, I like surprises, so that's all I'm going to tell you. It's a man. I'm not going to tell you who it is. You're going to have to uh, subscribe and, and be ready to see it. It's going to happen this month, the month of June. And I'm going to give you some details about it. But again, I want to boast in Christ. I want to bo boast in Christ because, um, you know, sometimes you come to the realization you're not worthy. We're all sinful and we're not worthy of God's grace. But every once in a while, you remind it that even though we're not worthy, that the perfect father, our father who are in heaven, believes you're worth the blood of God. There's no greater worth than that. So I know many of you out there are feeling down these days. You know, it's a rough economy. The Biden economy is, is, is brutal. Um, and you might feel like you're being punished, like... Uh, God doesn't love you, but God says you're worth the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. There's no greater worth. And, you know, I, I'll tell you firsthand, um, you know, as a teenager, I was a drug dealer from age 12 to age 19. Every day I was doing drugs, drinking heavy alcohol, strong alcohol. I should be physically dead, but by the grace of God, I'm 57 years old and last night, you know, I'm at Muay Thai and I'm going head to head with 20 year olds. You know, this is the grace of God. He restores the years the locusts have eaten, you know, but even, even greater than that, even greater than that. Well, first let me, uh, I'm, I promise you I'm going to get to the details about the presidential candidate here in a minute, how this all came about and, and what I hope to happen. But first of all, I just want to tell you, my wife said she was sitting in adoration yesterday and, and a thought came to her and I thought it was pretty, pretty deep. She said, you know, we're seeing things all wrong as humans. As humans, we see, okay, we're following Jesus. 
Praise the Lord. We're blessed. Too blessed to be stressed, too anointed, <laughs> to be disappointed. If I could quote uh, uh, Jesse uh, Romero, uh, I love I love those two things he says. But, uh, you know, we're walking, we're blessed, we're happy, we're on our way to heaven. But he's, he's like, no, you, you, you got to look at it other ways because you know, we're on our way to heaven, we're blessed, we're following Christ. And then we get sick, we're like, why am I sick? Or a loved one dies, why'd they die? Or if something terrible happens, why, why, why? Well, we shouldn't flip the script and realize we, all of us, me, you, everyone watching this, rebelled against God. And we were exiled. We're in exile. <laughs> we're not in heaven yet. We're exiled. And by his grace, he came to us in exile and died for us so we could go be with him. But we're still in exile on our way, on a journey. We're, we're, we're not in a good place. We're in the world. The, the Bible says the, the prince of this world is Satan. So when sickness comes, when, when, when tragedy comes, we shouldn't be surprised. This is, this is the exile we're in. This is the world we're in. But when we're blessed, like this blessing, we should realize, wow, this is awesome. Every moment we should, that we breathe, we should take as a blessing. When, when my grandson was born last month, Silas, like that was such a blessing. Like, like we shouldn't have these blessings, but we have them. Why? Because God loves us <laughs> and, God, and God is love, you know, and he blesses us. So we should be looking at every good and perfect thing in our life as something we don't deserve. And it's a blessing. And every bad thing is like, yeah, yeah, this is the exile we live in. <laughs> you know, one day I'll be home and there'll be no more sickness and there'll be no more tears. But until then, this is what we got to deal with. And it, and again, if you don't know me, this hits so hard. This hits so hard with me. This comes home to me. You see, at 14 years old, I, I took my 14 year old girl, girlfriend to a Planned Parenthood to have an abortion. And they kept it secret. They didn't tell our parents. They didn't tell nobody. But we kept that secret. And it devastated us. And, she, and, and But by the grace of God, this frightened little girl held on to me. And I held on to her. And we've held on for 38 years of marriage and been blessed with five kids. That shouldn't have happened. We're in exile. We should be statistics. Two drug addict kids. Instead, we have five awesome kids. 12 beautiful grandchildren. This is the grace of God I'm talking about. This is what I say when I boast in Christ. So now I'm going to start boasting, but you need to know it's not this unemployed, <clears throat> this unemployed blue collar guy that the world thinks is worthless. The boast is in Christ who gave us the greatest blessing, his son. And then he gives us other blessings along the way. He knew I love Scott Hahn. I have Scott Hahn on my show. He knows I'm a big fight fan. One of my heroes growing up was Pinklin Thomas. I go to Pinklin Thomas's house. This, this just blows my mind. But now I've been a political nerd my whole life and I have a presidential candidate coming on my show to talk to me. Now, I love surprises. You guys know I'm not going to tell you who it is because I want you to be surprised. Um, but let me tell you how it came about. I invited a bunch of them, I, almost all of them. And no one's re even replied yet. Uh, but this gentleman replied pretty quickly. And he was gracious enough uh, to tell me to give him a few dates. And he's available at the end of June. And now you need to pray for me because I'm unemployed now. But I need a job. <laughs> and if I get a new job, I don't want to take off right away. So I got to play this carefully. You know, I pride myself on never calling in. I can't think of one time I called in sick in the last 20 years, honestly. You know, I've taken days off personally, but they're always pre-planned. So I have to, hopefully I can work it where I know the date before I get hired from a job I don't know I'm getting hired from yet <laughs> and say, hey, I need to stay off. I had a previous engagement and hopefully they're cool with that uh, because I don't want to miss this opportunity. I'm really, really excited. Now there's so many different candidates and me and you aren't going to agree with everything they say so i don't want i'm not going to endorse anybody i don't want this to be like an endorsement i don't want you to think i'm endorsing but i'm also not going to be confrontational you know it's just not my it's not my nature you know there's there's going to be enough debates you're going to see this guy in debates you're going to see him on fox you're going to see him on cnn and he'll get questioned but what i want to do 
is I want to get to know the man, why his heart, why he wants to be president of the United States, and, and what he believes. And I want him to tell me why we should believe what he believes. You know, this is going to be a fun, you know, this is going to be a fun conversation. I really, I'm really looking forward to it. And, you know, back in the day in New York City, there was a mayor, uh, Ed Koch, and he used to say something I liked. He said, if you agree with me, eight out of 12 of the issues, and this is what we vote for issues. I want to get to know the man, but you don't, don't vote for someone because you like him. Vote for him for what he's going to do, because whether you like him or not, that's not going to affect your life. What he, what he does is is going to affect your life. The policies he puts into place are going to affect your life. So Koch used to say, if you agree with me at eight out of 12 of my, eight out of 12 main issues, vote for me. If you agree with me 12 out of 12, you're not thinking for yourself, <laughs> you know? So I'm, you know, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I invited, I'm going to try and invite them all. I invited most of them. This is the first gentleman who agreed to come on. Maybe the other ones will see. Okay, wow. You know, this is the audience. The blue collar, you know, the blue collar vote is the vote everybody's after now. And, you know, you're getting a Catholic vote and a blue collar vote here. Uh, and I have many non Catholic Christians that watch it. You know, the evangelical vote, if you add all, everyone who confesses to be a Christian in this country, that's like 70% of the vote. So, I don't think this gentleman's doing it that way. This gentleman seems a genuine, nice guy that I said, hey, we'll have a fun conversation. And he said, yeah, sounds cool. Let's do it. Um, and like I said, I'm not going to be confrontational and, and, and argue about things I disagree with. I'm going to listen. You know, I had Dr. Robert P. George on here, and uh, he is really good friends with another scholar. He was on Blue Collar and a Scholar. And he's really good friends with another scholar, uh, Dr. Cornell West. And Dr. Cornell West is as liberal as you get. And Dr. Robert P. George is as conservative as it gets. And I said, how do you guys get along so good? You know, I said, you know, I'm old school. I understand that. I, I've debated my liberal friends for years and we're friends. You know, we'll, we'll go out and have a beer afterwards or while we're having a beer with debate. I said, but today, day and age is like, it's like so tribal, you know. Like back in the day, we think, okay, this guy's wrong. I need to convince him. But now it's like, this guy's evil. I need to kill him. <laughs> you know, he needs to be exterminated. Both sides are like this, you know? And Dr. Robert P. George said, because we both understand that we could be wrong. So if you go into a conversation saying, listen, I don't know everything. I'm not God. I could be wrong. You're willing to listen. And that's what I do when I talk to people and in this case interviewing people with opposing views and i'm not saying i oppose everything this guy says i'm just telling you you know i don't want to get emails oh why didn't you ask him this why didn't you ask him that listen i'm not tim russard <laughs> i'm the blue collar guy i want to get to know this guy as a friend i want you guys to know him as a friend because I, I i genuinely believe that his intentions are good i genuinely believe he's an honest and a respectable man. I have a lot of respect and, and uh, admiration for this gentleman. But of course, I'm not going to agree with everything he says and everything he believes. So pray for me uh, because I'm hoping that this is a start of having all the candidates come on. And, uh, you know, it might just be a pipe dream or it might be a dream God put in my heart. I don't know. But like I said, I, I it's it's like five <laughs> it's like five in the morning <clears throat> i'm in my boxes i've been up for hours i gotta go uh job hunting again today so uh you know if i land a job and they want me to start right away i mean there's a lot but i, I truly believe that this is gonna happen and uh this this gentleman said uh he's available at the end of june he said late june give him some dates so uh I'm gonna talk to my son because you know I need I need help <laughs> with these things. <laughs> I know how to video on a phone, but you know, when you get into a webcam and Zoom and everything else, I need a little technical advice. So I got to see what days he's available, and then I'm gonna send him some dates, and uh, I'm sure this is gonna work out. And uh, you know, thank you because you know without you guys watching and praying for me, uh, you know, I, I doubt I would get a presidential candidate on. So. 
God bless and stay Catholic.